Right everyone, it is Finn here, and of course, welcome back to my channel, where today I'll be predicting the first round of AFCON 2021. And ladies and gentlemen, I am so tremendously excited. AFCON 2021 is finally here, it's literally a day or two away, and of course I've been making a lot of AFCON content on this channel as of late. You guys seem to have loved it, I've enjoyed making it, and as I said, I'm just so tremendously excited for this competition in general. I think there are some amazing teams, there are so many teams that could win the competition this year and looking at round one of the competition we've got some incredible mashups to look out for obviously what i'll be doing in today's video if you are new to these videos on my channel is of course we'll be looking at each game i'll be giving you my predictions in terms of the score and i'll also for majority of the games be giving an attempt on who i think the star player for each game will be and of course looking at the games we have to look out for for the first week of the competition we've got the likes of the host of course cameroon versus Burkina faso of course could be an absolutely brilliant mashup to brilliant teams we've got the likes of ethiopia versus cape verde we've got senegal versus zimbabwe we've got guinea versus malawi we've got morocco versus ghana which legit might be one of my favorite mashups of the whole competition not just round one of the competition obviously morocco missing out on some star players this competition that weren't able to make it but versus the likes of the black stars of ghana i think it could still be a really tight competition and it's going to be really entertaining to watch Obviously, past that, we've got the Camerots Islands versus Gabon. We've got Algeria versus Sierra Leone. Could be another really interesting mashup. We've got Nigeria versus Egypt. Once again, just like Morocco versus Ghana, could be an absolutely brilliant game. Nigeria, some brilliant players in their squad, are missing some due to COVID and other reasons. Versus Egypt, the team which I've seen this, said this multiple times before, might just have the best player in the world with Mo Salah. So Nigeria versus Egypt, it will be an entertaining watch. After that, we've got Sudan versus Guinea-Bissau. We've got Tunisia versus Mali, and, uh, Mali another good mashup. Uh, we've got Maritania versus Gambia. We've got Equatorial Guinea versus Ivory Coast. And those are the games we have to look out for for round one. As I said, what a way to start off the competition. Now, of course, if you guys haven't seen my overall predictions for the group stage of the competition, I will link it in the description down below. That video has just reached 10,000 views. So thank you so much for that. Um, obviously, as I said, if you haven't watched it yet, make sure to check it out. But looking at round one of the competition, the first round of AFCON 2021, I'm so excited. We start off with, as I said, the hosts, Cameroon versus Burkina Faso. Now, of course, looking at Cameroon, once again, they've got an absolute absolutely brilliant squad from head to toe from attack to defense to their goalkeeper their midfield it is looking absolutely insane from them and they could be one of the favorites to win the competition looking at them over their last five games they have won four out of their last five games they're in relatively good form they've scored 10 goals in those five games and only conceded three so once again that just shows you attacking and defensively they are going to be the team to beat in this competition where if you look at Burkina Faso once again not a team you can sleep on they've been in brilliant form unbeaten in their last 11 games previously they won 3-0 versus Gabon and they drew 2-2 versus Algeria the current title holders of the competition I feel like this is genuinely a super tight contest that could go either way but as I said just looking at Cameroon overall I do feel like they have these slightly better players nothing bad versus Burkina Faso I think Bertrand Traore up front could make the difference from Aston Villa and Top Soba um, from Bayer Leverkusen in defense I think Burkina Faso could really make it a tight competition but I do think Cameroon will win it 2-1 I just feel like overall they are a slightly better team and of course in terms of the player to watch I'm going to go for the likes of Ikambi the Olympic Lyon uh, winger obviously is a very tall very physical winger has been good in the French league so far this season is normally quite good for Cameroon and as I said just that physical physicality coming in from the wide areas I feel like he will be the difference maker for Cameroon uh, next up, we've got Ethiopia versus Cape Verde. Now, of course, I know I've got quite a lot of Ethiopian fans on this channel. I'd hate to disappoint you guys, but at the end of the day, I have to admit, I think Ethiopia could get quite a comfortable 2-0 win versus Cape Verde. Once again, just overall, in terms of form, looking at Ethiopia, in their last three games, they've beaten the likes of Sudan, they drew to the likes of Zimbabwe, and they drew to the likes of Ghana. Those are some very, very big results and very big points to pick up on at the end of the day. I think Ethiopia just in general looks slightly better than Cape Verde, especially in terms of form. Cape Verde, I mean, they recently drew to Nigeria, so that shows that they can still steal points, but I'm just slightly more convinced 
of Ethiopia at the moment. So Ethiopia 2-0 win and my player to watch is going to be a man by the name of Katana Kabede, if that's how you pronounce it. Once again, absolutely brilliant looking attacking player has scored 32 goals in 61 games for Ethiopia. So a goal every two games on ratio, I think he could be a real difference maker and could be the difference maker versus Cape Verde. I think he could score both goals if necessary. Genuinely, I think Ethiopia probably the favorites in this matchup. Next up, we've got Senegal versus Zimbabwe, which I would love, love, love to give Zimbabwe the point here. A Southern African team, they represent the boys, obviously my nation not being in the competition. But at the end of the day, looking at Senegal, their team is absolutely incredible. They are the highest rated African team in the world at the moment, according to FIFA rankings. And you know what? I just can't see them losing points versus Zimbabwe. I am going to give them a 3-0 win. Unfortunately, Zimbabwe are also missing two or three major key players for this competition, so that doesn't help their case. But as I said, looking at Senegal, their goalkeeper is UEFA's best men's goalkeeper of the year, Eduard Mendy. In defense, they've got Koulibaly, nicknamed The Wall. And once again, I'm not the smartest guy around, but to get a nickname like that, you have to be somewhat good defensively. They've got a really good midfield. They've got Saar and Mane in their attack. Once again, Mane, one of the best wingers in the entire world, has been tearing it up for Liverpool in the Premier League this season. As I said, Senegal, I have to give them the win and my player to watch will be Sadio Mane. As I said, has been really, really good over the last few years, is the star of this team and I think we'll just see that versus a team like Zimbabwe. Moving on, we've got Guinea versus Malawi. Now looking at these two teams, I feel like it's going to be a very, very tight contest. I'm not too sure what differentiates or separates these two teams in a competition like this. Obviously, they are both in a really, really tricky group. It's going to be very tricky for them to kind of escape from their group. Um, I don't know if we can see on the side here uh, where their group is, if I can end up finding it. Yeah, Guinea, Malawi, Senegal, and Zimbabwe. It's not going to be tricky. So I think between these two teams, they're probably going to end up fighting for that best third place position in terms of their table. Um, once again, nothing separates them too much. I think in terms of a result, I am going to put forward a 1-1 draw. As I said, I just don't feel too uh, confident in either of these two teams to necessarily get the win. I think Guinea have been in decent form, but lots of their results have been draws. They are draws. They have been struggling to get wins. But if you look at Malawi, they've only won one game in their last five. So once again, both teams struggling to get wins, and I think they'll end up sharing the points. Moving on, we've got Morocco versus Ghana. Once again, might be one of my favorite um, games of this entire competition. Not just of round one, but of the entire AFCON competition. Obviously, Morocco missing out on some key players with the likes of, obviously, Ziyech being the big one from Chelsea, whether he plays as an attacking midfielder or a right winger, not at the competition, and that is a major loss. They're obviously also missing out on the likes of Missouri, the right back um, from Ajax. Once again, that's really weakened the right-hand side of Morocco, but they've still got some brilliant players throughout their squad. Obviously, on that right-hand side, they still have the likes of Hakimi, plays as a right-back for PhD, but plays as a winger for his national team, an absolutely brilliant player at the end of the day. They've got Saiz from Wolverhampton Wanderers, has been brilliant defensively this season, one of the best centre-backs in the Premier League. They've got Bueno, if that's how you pronounce it, the goalkeeper from Sevilla. He's been solid over the last two, three years. They've got Enesiri, or Enesiri, uh, sorry if I can't pronounce these names, guys. Once again, I am sorry. The Sevilla striker, one of the top goal scorers in La Liga last season, has suffered with injuries this season. But uh, you know what? He has recently returned, and I feel like he is one of those strikers when he hits top form, he can be so deadly. So even though they are missing a few players, I really like Morocco's chances versus Ghana, where if you do look at Ghana, once again, star-studded squad in terms of attackers. I mean, the IU brothers, when they hit top form for the national team and club, they are unstoppable. Really fast players, very skillful on the ball. They've obviously got the likes of Amate from Leicester City in defense. He's been really, really good when he transitions from a fullback to a centre-back. And they've also got the likes of, of course, their star man, Thomas Partey. In terms of his vision for Arsenal, he's an absolutely brilliant player, very good creatively. Obviously, he's more of a defensive midfielder though, so defensively can be very, very solid. And as I said, between Morocco and Ghana, I'm going to find it really, really hard to separate the points. But at the end of the day, I think I'm just going to edge Morocco's way with a 3-2 win. 
as I said, I think it's just going to be so, so tight between these two teams. Um, but yeah, I just feel like from goalkeeper to attack, I feel like Morocco is slightly stronger. I feel like Ghana still have some weak points in their team. Once again, guys, if you, for example, are a Ghana fan, don't be too offended. Obviously, I have to pick teams to win and lose. It is nothing personal against your team. I still think you guys have brilliant players and it could genuinely go either way. I just think Morocco will take this one. And in terms of a player to watch, it is going to be Nesseri, the severe striker. Once again, as I said, one of the top goal scorers in the league last season which is hard to do considering he had the likes of Jared Moreno, Karim Benzema, brilliant strikers like that so to still have your name up there very very impressive. Moving on next we've got the Cameras Islands versus Gabon. Now initially when I started looking at these two teams I initially thought surely Gabon would have it in the bag. They've got the likes of Lamina in their squad, they got the likes of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, one of the best strikers in the world when he is hitting form. So I thought surely Gabon would have it in the bag. But technically looking at it, I don't think it's going to be as easy as that. Obviously, Gabon um, got second place in their World Cup qualifications group. They won't be able to qualify for the competition. I feel like Gabon as a whole is very one-man dependent from time to time, unfortunately. Looking at Camaros, I mean, they beat the likes of Sierra Leone recently. They also recently, in the last few months, got a 7-1 win versus Seychelles. Now, yes, I know those aren't necessarily the top, top, top opponents, but really, ruthless wins them. I just think it's going to be so tight between these two teams. As I said, unfortunately, in my opinion, opinion Gabon once again I might be wrong here but I feel like they are too dependent on one or two players and I feel like Camarus or, or Camarus Islands I feel like they are the nation that could surprise us at this competition I feel like they are the team that not too many people know too much about but they could have uh, hand you over a heavy surprise and because of that I'm going to put forward a one one draw once again looking at gabon unfortunately over some of their recent results a lot of draws a lot of one nil wins or a one nil losses they haven't been super convincing so i do think it'll be a tight contest and in terms of a player to watch once again if i can't pronounce these names i am sorry uh, but it is going to be a man by the name of faze salamani salame if that's how you pronounce it sorry obviously a winger doing really really well in the belgian pro league has gotten nine goals and four assists in 20 belgian pro league appearances looking really really good next up we've got Algeria versus Sierra Leone now of course this is an absolutely monstrous mashup obviously Algeria the 2019 AFCON winners they've got a lot to prove in a competition like this obviously Sierra Leone once again a team that can steal valuable points looking at Sierra Leone obviously within the World Cup qualification stage or for the AFCON qualifications they got two draws versus Nigeria you cannot sleep on Sierra Leone they've got that ability to be deadly they've got the likes of Kei Kamara in attack he's been scoring for fun as of late once again Sierra Leone just looking really really good at the moment but from time to time they do seem to lose against small nations teams that aren't that good so that does worry me. Where, if you look at Algeria, there are 33, 34 games unbeaten now. The longest run out of every African team. They are just looking really, really tough to beat at the moment. They've just beaten Ghana 3-0. I am going to have to give Algeria a 3-0 win. Sorry, once again, Sierra Leone. It's nothing personal. Algeria just looking like the better team. And their player to watch, it just has to be Riyad Mahrez. The best winger in the world, uh, probably of the Mohamed Salah. Once again, absolutely brilliant player. The captain of the Phoenix Foxes. I just think he's going to have a brilliant tournament and will be the player to watch. Next up, we've got Nigeria versus Egypt. Once again, a highly, highly, highly anticipated match. I think this is going to be one of my favorite games of the entire competition. Obviously, looking at Nigeria, they are missing a few players due to COVID and injuries that will have a huge blow to them looking at Egypt once again 15 games unbeaten at the moment so I do feel like Egypt versus Nigeria two very solid teams it is going to be such an incredible mashup as I've said before Egypt have the best player in the world in my opinion in Mo Salah but I feel like Nigeria as a unit is a very very solid team obviously if you guys haven't seen I have been doing videos where I list and name some African nations best possible starting 11 for the competition if you haven't seen that for example Nigeria I have done I will link it up in the i thingy up, um, up above or in the description down below. I'll put a playlist for all the nations I've done there. But Nigeria versus Egypt. 
as I said, going to be tremendously close. But for some reason, I just feel like defensively from goalkeeper all the way to attack, Nigeria might individually have the better team this tournament. And they've been playing really, really well. As I said, although Egypt at the moment, 15 games unbeaten, I feel like Nigeria also in good form. But you also have to remember, they recently got a new manager. We don't know how they're going to perform in a big competition like this with a brand new manager. Also, without the likes of Ossiman, their main striker, who's been their main scorer as of late, once again, they might end up struggling so because of that because they've got a new manager because they have been struggling with injuries they have been losing star players i am going to give egypt a 3-2 win i think it could go genuinely either way in fact i mean on my um, notes that i've made here i've actually put down a nigeria win but just naming some of these statistics it's kind of swayed my opinion and i do think egypt will win it sorry nigeria it is nothing personal you guys could genuinely still win it and in terms of a player to watch it is going to be from the losing side this time around with the likes of chick weezer that's how you pronounce it from villarreal obviously the winger without having the likes of aussie man the main goal scorer in their squad without the likes of igalo all those players although i could have chosen ian nacho i feel like this is where chick weezer really shows his worth shows that he can be the scorer for the team because they desperately desperately need that now moving on we've got the likes of sudan versus guinea bissau once again could be a really really interesting mashup between these two teams looking at sudan once again one of those teams that is picking up a lot of draws which is valuable means that they can pick up points but it also means from time to time that they can struggle with wins looking at the two previous games between these two teams last time they played against each other was only the 15th of november it was a 0-0 draw and before that the 7th of september 2021 a 4-2 win to Guinea-Bissau so when it comes to previous games between two these two teams it does seem to sway Guinea-Bissau's side once again going to be really really tricky Sudan getting a lot of draws Guinea-Bissau seem to get some valuable results but they seem to struggle versus big teams which could show as a problem later this tournament but versus each other I am going to give Guinea-Bissau the slight advantage as they have shown as of late versus Sudan specifically that they can pick up results and in terms of a player to watch unfortunately one of those teams where I don't know enough about the players in order to predict a player to watch now next up we've got tunisia versus mali and of course tunisia i remember them from the 2018 world cup once again this is going to be an incredibly tricky mashup to make the last time these two teams played each other was in june 2021 and that's when tunisia won 1 0 but i've got news for you guys that was the last time mali lost ever since then mali have been in incredible form they've got incredible players in their team with the likes of basuma the brighton midfielder who can score goals and do well defensively in the midfield we've got the likes of janepo who's a brilliant winger for southampton still very young 23 years old i feel like he's got a lot of potential to him where if you look at tunisia once again they're in good form at the moment especially with the likes of uh Kazri, obviously seven goals and 19 league appearances this season for saint etienne by far their best player in the French League. I feel like this is going to be such a tight contest. As I said, the previous game was won by Tunisia, but since then, Mali's form has kind of convinced me that I think they could win. And as I said, my player to watch is going to be Basuma, the Brighton midfielder. As I said, he just seems all around brilliant. Defensively, attacking wise, he will make the difference. Now, heading on to our second last game before heading on to Equatorial Guinea and Ivory Coast, we've got Maritania versus Gambia. Once again, tricky ish game to predict i guess but if you look at their form it's just a no-brainer in my opinion that gambia will end up winning this maritowania only winning one of their last seven games it's not looking brilliant for them gambia at the moment winning four out of their last seven games i've got the likes of musa burrow uh, one of their wingers looking really really good so far this season with five goals and three assists in 13 appearances so far this season eight goals and eight assists in 38 games last season once again gambia just seemed to have the better players at the moment they seem to be able to score more goals defensively look a bit more solid and as i said better form i am going to go for gambia now ladies and gentlemen that takes us to our final game of this match week now of course equatorial guinea versus ivory coast i am going to have to go for ivory coast on this one i'm going to give them a very comfortable 3-0 win once again one of those teams that i think could genuinely win this competition saying that equatorial guinea once again could steal points they could make it a tight contest they previously drew to the likes of maritowania they won versus tunisia drew versus zambia and before that won versus zambia so equatorial guinea has been in brilliant form as of late but once again 
looking at Ivory Coast, I just feel like their squad is so strong at the moment. As I said, they look really, really good at the Olympics. In terms of their attack, their striker is the top goal scorer in the Champions League at the moment. They've got Nicolas Pepe in their squad. They've got Wilfred Saha. They've got Maxwell Cornet. They've got Eric Bailey in their squad. They've got such a brilliant squad overall. Maybe the only weak spot, as I've mentioned beforehand, is their goalkeeper. But other than that, Ivory Coast, I feel like, should dominate this game and it shouldn't be a problem. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for my round one predictions of AFCON 2021. Um, just quickly in terms of my play to watch for this. As I said, top goal scorer in the uh, Champions League at the moment probably has to be the likes of Sebastian Haller. Has been brilliant and I think he could score a hat-trick versus Guinea. But ladies and gentlemen, that is just a quick summary here at the bottom of all the predictions that I ended up making. I hope you ended up enjoying this. Once again, guys, I cannot stress this enough. Do not take this personally. Do not attack me in the comment section down below. That's all I needed for him to do that. And it, it became personal with me. Obviously, that happened at the Euros. People seem to have done that. And I know people will do this on this one, so I don't know why I'm trying. But guys, it's nothing personal. Football is football. It's an unpredictable game. Absolutely anything can happen. But AFCON 2021, it is finally underway. I'm so tremendously excited. And of course, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please leave a like down below and don't forget to subscribe. Guys, this channel has been growing by an insane amount lately. And I genuinely think we can hit 3,000 subscribers before the end of the competition. Please can we see if we can do that but ladies and gentlemen this has been film fy double n enjoy the african cup of nations